Okay. So, as I was saying before, I was so politely interrupted by myself. Sarah and a star in Spanish both mean to be. That sounds very easy until you put it into practice. Ser means to be when you're talking about something that is permanent, like adjectives that describe someone or a place. And a star is more temporary, like emotions. You know, emotions can change. Even if you're feeling sad, if a random person in the hall asks you how you're doing, you're probably going to say you're fine. You know, emotions change all the time. And so when we talk about emotions, we use the verb as star. So as if to say, you know, I am happy, that would be estoy feliz. And I am Mr. Tiller, yo soy señor Tiller. You know, it's just a little different. Like, um, I am a teacher, yo soy profesor. I'm confused, estoy confundido. We use Sarah and star differently, depending on the situation. So here's a nice rule of thumb, something you can memorize. How you feel and where you are is when you use the verb as star. What you're like and where you're from is when you use the other one, ser. You just gotta throw ser in at the last minute there. It doesn't actually rhyme, so you just gotta throw it in. I'll say it again. How you feel and where you are is when you use the verb as star. What you're like and where you're from is when you use the other one, ser. Yeah, um, one time I told a Spanish 2 class that they needed to tattoo that on their brains. They needed to be like, that little mantra, they needed to tattoo it on their brains. So I thought I would be the example, and I was like, you know what, I'll get that tattooed on my back. Yeah, living the example, you, you know, you gotta be the change you wanna see in the world. And then um, that would have been a great idea, but my wife shot it down. <laughs> She didn't like that idea, you know, so I didn't do it, <laughs> but I thought about it, you know, anyways, another way you can um, learn the intricacies of Sarah and the Star is with the acronyms doctor and place, so on the next, so the next slide I'm going to explain how to do that, doctor, date, Occupation, characteristic, time, origin, relation. A star is place, position, location, action, condition, emotion. That's a lot to memorize, but you can do it. I mean, you memorized your birthday at some point in your life. And then, you know, there was that moment in your life where you realized your birthday is the same day you were born, and you just, like, couldn't handle it. Like, whoa, my existence is a lie. All right, so SER, Doctor, a star, Place. Those are good acronyms to memorize because to say I'm a doctor, you actually used ser. Soy doctor. Ella es doctora. She is a doctor. Él es doctor. Nosotros somos doctores. We are doctors. And estar, when you talk about place like location, you're going to use a star. Like, the door is beside the map. La puerta está al lado del mapa. So when you're talking about location or you're giving directions, that you use the verb as star, place. All right. So here's a little bit of Spanish one review. <clears throat> These are the subject pronouns. When I say repitan, that means I want you all to repeat what I say, okay? Repitan. Yo. Vos. Nos. Usted, él, ella. Nosotros. Vosotros. Ellos. Ellos. Ustedes. Ustedes. All right. 
That's the way, you don't necessarily need to write this down, but those were the subject pronouns in the 1200s, right? So you notice something a little different. Here is a different word. Does anyone know what it is? It's not yo, but what? What's supposed to go there? Tu. Yeah, someone said it, tu. So in the 1500s, Spanish changed a little bit. Tu was an insult. Now it's commonplace. Like, you know, calling one of your parents bruh. You've done it before. So that's what happened with the word tu. In the 1200s, tu was an insult. You didn't speak to people that way. And now it's cool. You know, wow. He just called you tu, bruh. Yeah, it was wrong that level, you know. He can talk to me like that, it's cool. Right? That's what happened to the Spanish language. And then, if you'll notice here, vos, the plural is vosotros. Usted, the plural is ustedes. It looks plural, right? El and ella, the plural form is ellos. It looks plural. It's got an S on the end of everything. So then yo, the word nosotros actually comes from a phrase which is yo y otros. Well, it literally means I and others. All right? I and others. Yo y otros, over like hundreds and hundreds of years in the Spanish language, morphed into the word nosotros. Nosotros. So that's how we got that. So it doesn't look like it's plural, but it kind of is. When we take into consideration that nosotros was an actual phrase, then you can see how yo could be plural, right? First person singular, second person singular, third person singular. First person plural, second person plural, third person plural. First person singular, second person singular, third person singular. First person plural, second person plural, third person plural. You see? Everything on this side is singular, everything on this side is plural. When we conjugate verbs, you're going to see the exact same format. First person singular will always be here. Third person plural will always be here. This will always be first person plural, second person singular, second person plural, third person singular. Like, it doesn't change. This format is always going to be like a puzzle. It always goes in the same order. These are the subject pronouns from about the 1800s into the present day. Vosotros is only used in Spain. You probably learned that in Spanish 1. These are like the Spanish pronouns as they exist now, right? You ever wonder why we say usted, which is like a formal way of saying you, and tu, which is an informal way of saying you? You ever wonder why they do that in Spanish? Has anyone ever explained it to you, like why they, why they do that? You ever see movies where like someone is going to address the king or the queen and they call the king your majesty or your mercy? Like movies from like knights and the Middle Ages. You see movies like that? Maybe a TV show where they address the king and they're like, Your Majesty, usted came from a phrase that was vuestra merced, which means our mercy. It was a way of addressing the king or the queen, like the royalty in Spain. And then over time, vuestra merced became usted. Vuestra merced formed the word usted, and it's just a polite way of speaking to someone that's in a position of authority. Um, and you may think, we don't do that in English. We kind of do. I mean, if you get a speeding ticket and you have to go to court, are you going to be rude to the judge? No. <laughs> you, you, there's a certain way of speaking, you know, to people who are in a position of authority. Like, you kind of put on the manners. I mean, you don't. If, if the judge will let you off, with no speeding ticket, that'd be great, right? So you put your best foot forward. When you meet the parents of your boyfriend or girlfriend, do you want to be all like rude and hateful? <laughs> or do you want to be nice and polite? You see what I mean? Like there's a certain way that you speak in English when you're trying to make a good impression. That's what usted really comes down to. Like in, in Latin America <clears throat> and Spain as well, when you speak to someone in the usted form, it's usually those instances in which you need to be polite, right? 
Okay. So these are the conjugations of the verb ser. Ser is spelled S E R, and then conjugated like this. You need to write that down. Repitan. Soy. Eres. Es. Somos. Sois. Son. Good. Now I crossed out sois because that's the vosotros form. Um, you will see the vosotros form in class, but you're not tested on it. So soy is I am, eres is you are, es can be he is or she is or usted es is a formal way of saying you are. Somos means we are, son means either they are or y'all are, the plural of you. Alright, those are all of our grammar notes for today. Alright.